welcome to this Heartness Roundtable video. I'm delighted to be joined by Mark Ashcroft, Tony Dilley, Andrew Emmett, Anthony Kelly and Cody Polar to reflect on what's been a busy start to 2024 uh, for Heartness, but also looking ahead to what is to come for the business and for the team. Um, guys, thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedules to join us. Um, Andrew and Tony, if you don't mind, if we can begin with you guys, as in January, you were at the ISE exhibition, which is the world's leading AV visual and systems integration exhibition, if I'm right in saying. Um, and Tony, just to, to start with you, just tell us a bit about what Hartness was showcasing whilst you were over, over there, and uh, just tell us a bit about the feedback you're getting as well. Yeah, ISE, when, when you go round it and you see the degree of displays for want of a better word you've got around there it's just not our market i mean some of the things they're doing are amazing to watch um you've got almost 3d monitors and all this sort of huge great visual displays so but we were showing um spectro um one of our calif devices for cinema um that's got a use for people in home cinema um, and also the ultimate, the Calif ultimate, that's got a use for people in home cinema. So that's what we were showing. And home cinema is huge. Uh, you, you've got a whole hall dedicated to speakers. And the majority of people are buying speakers for their home cinema. I mean, they'll even attempt or they'll try or they will put an Atmos system in their house. Now, in, in a cinema, an Atmos system could be up to 65 channels. So it's... It's big. It's big, big money, you know. And, and they've moved away from our market, so you know. It, but it's an interesting show. Yeah. Well, I'd, uh, I'd further further to that, Tony. We um, it's 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 huge event, isn't it? It's seventy five thousand attendees over the course of the week. I'd I would say that we certainly had a lot of our cinema customers because it is an AV integration show, so. It's not not necessarily our direct line of customers, but customers who are hard doing the the speaker installs, doing some home cinema work. They they're in attendance, and it's it's really positive to see. So we weren't there just for cinema, but but it certainly uh, the conversation led that way quite a few times. So yeah, it was a, it was a good event. And it's it's good to see our our customers away from the normal cinema opera house if you see what i mean so you know it's good you can talk to them you don't get the opportunity quite often to have those uh i don't know social discussions almost you you know standing there talking to a customer you're not talking to them about cinema you're just having an overall discussion with them and it's uh makes it a lot more interesting yeah absolutely tony i, th I think actually we, i had a chat with andrew at the end of last year and think we were talking about cine asia and that kind of personable aspects of, of attending exhibitions and things like this and it kind of relates to what you just said there isn't it Tony yeah. you're not just it's not business 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 it's all about creating these connections and strengthening that community that you guys have yeah that's that's it and it it, it, it makes networking easier you know, you get to know these people I, I mean cinema's a huge industry but there's not many people in it it's you know that particularly in our end of it the technical end of it yeah, and is it is is that important as well, Tony, to to build those that community and um, have that desire to collaborate with these people because cinema is always evolving, the industry is ever changing, and having yeah, that kind of relationship is yeah. Always I've, got, I've got some good friends in cinema, you know, people that I've known now, I've, I've known best part of thirty years, so you know, I have got some very good friends in cinema. So yeah, it, 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 it's all part of it. Yeah. And Andrew, go back to kind of your point before there that you said that you were able to, it was such a well participated event. I mean, I think ISE say themselves, it's kind of the launch pad event of the year, if you like, and, and given kind of the resurgence that you guys obviously saw with within the cinema industry last year, did you get a feeling that vibe that everyone was kind of on the same page and there was a bit of a positive outlook going into 2024? Um, well, the, the, the large the the lion's share of the event is is outside of um our typical industry you know it's we're we're not just an av av company the so that's that's where the majority of the work is um that's something that always strikes me I've, I've been a few times to to isc each time it's it's a it's such a vibrant huge industry 
uh, it goes without saying because they're doing displays and speakers and all all the audio side of things but it but it's um it it, it was particularly uh yeah hectic and so um, but it's it's positive to see it's quite quite nice to see it's uh, certainly um a different vibe to what a cinema show would be yeah yeah, but I, I guess it does it does it just help though with the overall kind of progression and the outlook for you guys where you are able to take a, a few learnings from what you might see hectic or not and, and bring it forward into 2024. Yeah, no, agreed, agree. Um yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely a positive outlook and a good way to to start the year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Anthony, just to kind of bring you into it, if that's okay, and focus on ICTA, you know, this, the question I posed to Andrew there was kind of how important these events are for the progression of Heartless, of Heartless overall, or the importance of attending these events are for the progression of Heartless overall. Is that absolutely key for ICTA in particular? Yeah, it's a great point, Chris. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a must attend and it's mainly because of the content. So the ICTA, it's, it, you know, it's the start of the year. It's in. Uh, it's not just because it's in Southern California in January, which isn't, you know, a bad start. But uh, great attendance this year. All stakeholders, be it from studios through to exhibitors, through to manufacturers, uh, integrators, <clears throat> really good sign. And uh, um, although uh, you know a lot of uh, the discussion is, um, uh, you know, partly about you know delayed content in 2024. A lot of optimism and, uh, you know, very, very positive. Uh, so, yeah, it's really important, uh, you know, one, so you can spend time with people, but then also this is a technical conference, uh, you know, and ha hats off to the organisers put together, you know, a real broad array of content. Um, and I, I I think it, um, it didn't just cover the key uh, new technologies in the industry, which is a lot of what the goal is. Uh, but also, I think, um, to your point, Chris, it, you know, it, it brings um, uh, to companies like us, um, you know, what really matters to all of those stakeholders in the industry, not what we think matters, but what really does. Um, and it gives the chance for people to start, start planting new thoughts, new ideas. And it certainly did that this year. Yeah, and, and, and I guess, you know, being in person at these events, Anthony, gives you that insight where you are able to take things forward. And again, going back to the conversation I had with Andrew about Cine Asia, given the way of the world over the last few years, it has been difficult to, to make those connections and, and really gain that valuable insight when you're having chats face to face. And I guess, again, at ICTA, you were able to do that and, and take things forward. And that was one of the, that, that always helps with the learnings from these events, I guess. Yeah, that, 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 that's right. You know, there's nothing quite like the face to face, although, you know, these video calls are great as well. But, um, you know, there's there's a balance. And I think we've all seen that, learned that. And it's nice to be at the other end of that where you can, you know, just have a have a coffee, have a chat, talk about, you know, what what happened, uh, you know, what's what uh, what the key topics are, you know, and at ICTA this year, you know, the, I, I'd probably drop it into, you know, three categories, a uh, big, big focus on premium, um, premium experience of the consumer, not necessarily premium large format, which is where that evolved from, to a very immersive, no matter what the size of the auditorium, I think cost down initiatives, um, just new technology that can take unnecessary cost out. Um, and uh, also, uh, you know, um, no, no question, everybody's got to focus on the environment and green and anything from how can you reduce energy usage, you know, um, um, HVAC costs, all, all of the all of these things. And um, I, so those topics all had sessions and airing, but then you could go out and talk to people about, well, how does this impact you? And so, you know, the one on one follow up, really important. Yeah. And, and and the objective, I, I guess, Anthony, is is making sure that this cinema is always number one at the very very forefront of consumer minds with all of these things that you guys attend to. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, at the end of the day, it's a consumer experience. That's what we all work towards. That's the fun of it. Um, and I would say, actually, it, um, even the most technical sessions. 
um, you know, they had a goal and a purpose eventually. What's the experience you're delivering? And that was a common thread this year. I, I, just just finally on, on, on the point of ICTA, Anthony, can you give us kind of an insight into the US market at the moment? And what's the feeling over there about the industry? <clears throat> yeah, so um, with the delayed content, um, there's no question that's causing, um, I'd say caution, uh, you know, it's, um, but um, for 2024, yeah, particularly early with uh, some of the, the movies being moved back. Um, yeah, that uh, that gives uh, people, um, you know, some some concerns, uh, perhaps, a you know, small C conservative uh, approach and probably right, rightly so. But there's a lot of optimism, not just about um, uh, later in 2024, but also 2025. And it's not just carrying the well, when will the movie content come out? <clears throat> There's a lot of applications of the new technology that people are investing in now and certainly wanting to know more about. So um, uh, it's very different to last year. It's very different to the year before. And so, um, you know, there's some way for the industry to go. So, you know, the industry is, you know, in the US, it's running at about eight, nine billion, and it was 11 billion. So how do we get it to 11? And people, but pe people are uh, preparing for it to be at 11. And then interestingly, some of these technologies, um, which like, you know, Andrew and Tony um, were talking about in terms of, you know, be it AV, you know, be it on the projector side, be it on the screen side. It's, you know, OK, so where does it go from the 11? How does it go to 12, 13, 14, as opposed to will it survive? Uh, we're way past there. And uh, so I, I think it was a very positive focus. And I'd say from all of the stakeholder sectors, it wasn't um, just the exhibitors. It wasn't just the studios. It, was, um, it wasn't just us. Um, so uh, a lot of work to do early in this year. Um, but um, later in 2024 um, and certainly 2025, um, I think uh, people are excited about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Anthony. And, and and just to bring it back to Andrew and Tony in terms of that stakeholders uh, kind of point that that Anthony made. Um, I was you guys, I think this week, if I'm right in saying what UK UKCA, uh, and I I was reading a few things around it and looking at the social media, and there seemed to be a real focus on grow, growing and maintaining audiences. So is that kind of what 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 you got from that, Andrew, to start with? Yeah, the the conference. So UKCA is the, the the governing body, if you like, of um, UK cinema, and so all the whether they're independent exhibitors or the the chain exhibitors are there, plus the technology partners, um, integration companies. So it's a it's a huge event, well well attended again, um, four hundred plus people, and yeah, the the con like the the whole concept behind the the two days was growing audiences. And that's that's key to the business is getting the the audience back. We we survive on cinemas surviving, so we need them to get get their box office box office up, and and that means you know business starts to starts to progress. They're then looking to upgrade, looking to to invest in their properties, um, and that's where that's where suppliers come in. So yeah, yeah, positive to see, and and it, it was a really good two days. Yeah, and Tony, just just on the audiences, and we, we we all love film, and you know the audience love making that connection with the film, don't they? And, and having that sort of bond with it. But I guess that only comes about if they are watching it on the highest quality screen or the highest quality product possible. So with Heartness, and given what Andrew's just said there, there, Tony, is it really good to be at these these things because you can get to learn about the audience's desires across the board because they all differ, I guess. I think you get a lot of presentations at UKCA and a lot of it is based around knowing your audience, be it through email, this communication, and they're very, very on top of figures, um, different ages and all this, who goes back to see what film, what, et cetera. One of the differences with UKCA is it majors around the independence, the independent of people with small 10, five, two, four screens. So 
it's a lot easier for them to react and do things. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. I'll give it a go in my cinema. And that's what they do. They're very, very creative and they know their audience very well. Whereas the larger, because you've got thousands going to view cinemas over the course of, they may know them from the point of view of an email address, but you start to get down to personalities with a lot of these smaller cinemas. And they'll do things. They just, they just try things. Alternative languages. You'll have, um, they'll do their own art, art house runs. They'll do whatever they feel like doing to try. And, and they were, this year, they were very buoyant. They, they, they were almost ignoring what Hollywood was saying. They were almost, you know, no, this is us. We know, we know we can do it this way. And, you know, it's like, yeah, as you were saying, the green, like Anthony was saying, to them, it becomes even more important because they can, if they've only got four cinemas, they can start to do things that do take an effect. Uh, like th there's one down in Dorset and they've got grass all over the roofs and things like this. And they're using um, heat pumps and everything like that because they can. You know, it's easier for them to do rather than someone like you trying to roll something out in all of their cinemas like that. Difficult. So, yeah, interesting show. Yeah, so it's a great point you make there, Tony, because you, you can automatically assume that, oh, Hartness will be speaking to, you know, your views and, and, and the bigger brands, but it's also probably as valuable, even more valuable, listening to these these independents, if you like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, alternative cinema, I mean, they make, they use alternative cinema a great deal. It's not as popular now with the big boys as it was, mm. but they're still using alternative cinema a great deal. You know, because it, they, they know it brings in certain audiences and those certain audiences, a bigger spend. They come in, they'll dress up for the evening, that they do a bigger spend like every man do. Every, every man, I mean, they are an independent. They've got quite a few screens, but when you look at them, they're an independent. But people go there to go out for a meal, not necessarily going mm. to the cinema. They go there to have a meal and they might go to the cinema while they're there. So, yeah, it, it's options. Yeah, and, and just finally on this, Andrew, I, I know it's a running theme that we've discussed so far with you and Tony as well, well as Anthony, but again, I think there was an article on the UKCA website about, you know, the overall feeling from people in attendance was a positive outlook for, for 2024. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and in addition to what, what Tony's just gone through there, the, the, the tentpole films are critical to our industry. We need, we need the big films coming in and... Um, there were some executives from two of the studios and part of the panel they were on, they, they were showing their commitment to the industry. So it's, they're, they're committed, they're keeping the, the window going with their, they're not going on demand straight away. So there's a real, there's a real support for um, cinema. They see the value that, that, you know, cinemas bring, that we bring to uh, what they're doing with their film content. So there's, um, it's, it's, it's positive on both sides um, and a, an event like UKCA, it's it's good to see you get a, a full picture of what's going on. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, Andrew. And Cody, to, to, to bring you in, sorry to leave you leave you out so far, but I was, I was chatting to Mark before and, you were, and he was mentioned that you were over in, in the south of France fairly recently too. Just just tell us a bit about more, a bit, bit about more why you were there and, and why Hartness, why it was important to Hartness. Yeah, so uh, I've been in uh, south of France recently. That was uh, to visit our new uh, uh, sister company, uh, HSG Labs. That's our uh, production and research uh, in photonics. And that is uh, really exciting for us. We've been working on this a while, getting, uh, we just moved offices. So we're able to to get our production up and running, get our labs up and running. So all our teams can get uh, back to uh, doing what they do best. Um, we're getting a theater up and running so we can uh, do demos. We can, we're looking at doing a training center, um, getting all our calibration equipment installed and, and up. So it's really exciting time and uh, it's nice that it's in South France too, so. <laughs> so, so you, between you guys, you've had California, Barcelona, South of France. It's not been that bad. Yeah, yeah, I, I got I got Munich in January. Oh, yeah. There you go. 
<laughs> it's, not, uh, it's not too bad, I don't think, Tony. You would have done it with them. <laughs> And any more any more visits that you guys have been on, Cody? Have you been focusing on anything else in particular? Or uh, we got a couple coming up, uh, demoing uh, Spectro and working on some uh, demoing the apps and Irish Cinema. So those are coming up in the next couple of weeks, and um, you know, just just getting some of those uh, that that ready for CinemaCon and getting production going so we can. You know, have you know, have have product for CinemaCon and uh, our guys to to make waves there. Yeah, I, I just just to go back to the uh, the, the the France stuff, uh, Tony. I, I saw something on social media that I wanted to put to you, and maybe maybe the guys as well. That I think um, it was the International Union of Cinemas tweeted out saying there was a twenty percent sort sort of increase uh, in the cinema industry in France from twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three. Is that Something that you felt for, from your visit over there was that an encouraging sign? For me, uh, I didn't. Cody. Well, I, well, anyone, anyone. Good. No, I, I don't. I don't I'm more uh, production, but yeah, the uh, uh, you know the guys are you know they're gearing up for like Cannes Film Festival, uh, getting our equipment in there. So now we have the ability to further expand that. But Tony might have some insight on the uh, the sales side. Each ticket. Unic is a uh, mainly European cinema. Um, they're quite political. They they lobby the European Parliament to work with cinema. Um, they'll talk to countries about uh, tax breaks in cinema and all that sort of stuff. Um, they're very, very much in favour of locally made films. And of course, France, forty percent, fifty percent of their films is are locally made, and you start to see that these countries that are coming out of what you would call the cinema recession quicker are quite often these ones that have got a larger degree of home content. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're doing quite well these days, because we're, we are making more and more films in the UK and people are going to see more British films. Um, so less reliance on Hollywood. Uh, and to a degree, Hollywood, that, that makes Hollywood, they've got to sort of get their act together, if you see what I mean. You can't keep churning out the same sort of stuff. It's got to have difference to it. I mean, another one, Turkey, all of a sudden that's coming back to life. Um, and they've got 50, 60 percent homegrown movies. So it, it, is a, it does make a difference. It makes a big, big difference if you've got a good homegrown film market. Yeah. And I think, Chris, France is important to Arkness. We've um, got our largest manufacturing facility, obviously, in France with Demospec Manufacturing, the investment in HSG Labs. Um, France is important and it is, it is encouraging to see French cinema, as Tony says, doing so well at the moment. And certainly uh, in the next few weeks, um, I'm over in France with the French team, meeting up with a couple of the major exhibitors, demonstrating our facility in, in France to them. So, yeah, you're right. France, um, France has been very positive for us since the start of the, the new year. Um, and, uh, you know, between Tony, Andrew, one of our colleagues, Eric Martin, we're, we're very focused on on that market yeah and, and just mark to, to sticking with you going back to kind of cody's point about you know gearing up really um for for cinema con and things like that is that one of the main sort of ex exhibitions events if you like that is really ring 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 circled sorry on on the hartness calendar in terms of making sure your presence is felt like not just because it's in vegas but just in just in terms of kind of the popularity of it and what you can get out of it it does seem to have become the number one cinema event. Um, it certainly, the Colosseum at Caesar's Palace is a, a draw for Hollywood A-listers. Um, and it's always great to see those A-listers stood in front of a Harkness Claris 1.7 um, 
I mean, I was just looking at the CinemaCon website before we came on the call, and it's 31 days and eight hours before CinemaCon opens, you know, when this year we're doing something quite different. Um, so we're moving away from the Augustus Ballroom, and we're moving down to the Julius Ballroom. Very, very good plug now. Stand 104. And in addition to that uh, booth space, we're also taking a, uh, a suite, the Salerno suite, on the promenade level. So we're really um, taking CinemaCon to the next level. And it is very important to us. And uh, I hope in the uh, coming weeks that we'll be able to get this group together again, probably introduce Laurent Espitalier, our CTO, and talk about what we're actually going to be doing at CinemaCon. But, you know, everything that Cody, Tony, Anthony and Andrew have been doing in the past nine weeks has really started to build the momentum for CinemaCon. And uh, I know Andrew's heading over to India again. Some of the work that Andrew will be doing in in India will be preparing the ground for CinemaCon. Um, I think Tony's just back from um, Belgium again, preparing the ground, and Cody and Anthony are working through the Iris program again in preparation for CinemaCon. So, yeah, it's certainly got a ring on the calendar that says it's an important event. Um, and I think the five of us are going to be there. Um, and we're looking forward to meeting friends, colleagues, partners, stakeholders, customers, new customers. Exciting time for us. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. You mentioned, obviously, Andrew's trip to, to India there, but I, I'm looking as well. At, you guys are very heavily involved in Berlin as well, aren't you, Mark, in terms of kind of uh, being the star of the show, if you like, uh, looking at the, the hardness of social media over the last few days? Well, Tony did something quite uh, remarkable um, sort of three years ago. Um, he managed to transform a request for a a screen into a multi-year sponsorship of one of Europe's leading film festivals. And quite frankly, it has um, really grabbed the attention of so many people that we're able to support that film festival. Um, we've always supported the Cannes Film Festival. We've been supplying screens to Cannes for 20 odd years. As Cody mentioned, we've been supplying the screen monitoring systems into CAM for, I think, since 2016. Um, so, you know, um, film festivals done right, and CAN and Berlin Ali are great examples, really allow us to showcase our, uh, our screens and our screen monitoring. Tony, I don't know what you think of what we've been doing at Berlin Ali, but it's certainly Added yeah, to what? I, I think that but it's a showcase for, for Perlux, our 2D screens. They don't do much. The sort of films they show don't lend themselves to being 3D. Um, so they don't do much 3D. It's, it, it's virtually 100% 2D showings. And Perlux being the best 2D screen in the world. And it showcased itself really well at the Berlin Ali. So, yeah, and that, that, that's what it's all about. I mean, the shows that do do 3D, like CinemaCon, Cine Europe, we put our Clara screen into there. So we've always supported exhibition shows. We do the San Sebastian one. We do Camera Image in Poland. So there's lots of different shows that we support. Yeah, no, brilliant. It's definitely something to, to look forward to as, as well as CinemaCon, as, as as Mark touched on there. And kind of with, with, with this roundtable, guys, just to kind of finish things off, but we wanted to get thoughts on 2024 and guesses and maybe predictions for, for 2025. I know we've discussed a lot around sort of the start of this year up to this point, uh, but 
maybe going around starting with maybe you, Andrew, to begin with, sort of thoughts on 2024 going forward and, and any sort of predictions or sort of guesses you may have for, for 2025, uh, uh, even though I'm looking at the calendar and it's only the 8th of March at the time yeah. of recording. No, of course, of course, Chris. Um, I, Anthony mentioned it, um, caution and optimism, and that, that was mentioned a few times at the UKCA, and it, it was repeated. But what I would say on that, they it was said, but they weren't. It didn't seem they were too concerned. So even though there's caution and there's optimism, it's not pessimism, which is is quite often the way it has been for the last few years. So I I'm going to read between the lines and say I think I think we're we're going to see growth this year. It might not be a huge amount of growth. And when I say we, I'm talking about the industry. So box office. I think I think there'll be um, a small amount of growth which with all the problems that have been in place with the right to strike so therefore content film content just hasn't been coming through um i i do think a little bit of growth is is a good thing and if i'm um, looking forward to 2025 going going forward quite a few months now um with that additional content and the the positive position hopefully the businesses are a bit more secure in in their you know outlook their trading is is going well um, I think 25 could could be a much more um, a, a, something to celebrate. I think I think we'll be back. I think 25 is going to be good. I'll step in. I'll step in. Um, I agree with Andrew. <laughs> That's no, I I I think uh, taking the learnings. You know, just circling back, Chris, to you know, back to ICTA. You know, those those three categories. I think 2024 will be you know very much focused on okay the premium experience there's a lot of investment going into that you know and uh, that brings people in and one of the um uh, speakers from one of the studios the icta said um uh you know they're they're a big uh, supporter of um cinemas and uh, releasing content in cinemas and it, they they just said the, the experience has to be better than staying at home. That was one of their phrases. And it is, uh, you know, and by focusing on things like, OK, well, how do we as an industry make that experience better? Not just in terms of things like comfort and concessions, but on perhaps more our side of it um, with, uh, you know, how good is the presentation and just keep stepping that up. Um, and consumers, our own research has shown that consumers really respond to that. So again, it comes back from the consumers. Um, so the focus on that, I think, in 2024, there will be investment. There are people planning for, uh, as well for 2025. And then I think 2025, that there's no longer this, um, it appears that it's this big tension between streaming and cinema. They can live side by side, you know, but there's no question, you know, the big uh, movies are coming out in 2025, 2024 and 2025 in the cinema, as long as it's a great experience, which is it's great to see, you know, the industry focus on that. So um, I, I would I'm very optimistic for how 2024 will unfold, focused on those areas and then 2025 um you know bigger bigger and bolder i, th I think so um uh, it's nice to see and obviously leading into cinemacon people you know they're going there with that in mind yeah it's great great to hear that optimism anthony tony cody anything to add from from your side uh, i i tend to agree there's definitely i mean pre new year there wasn't there was definitely doom and gloom pre-New Year. Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. Now, whether there was a degree of backside covering going on, just in case it did go wrong, I don't know. But slowly but surely, that's changed. Um, yeah, as, as the spring's coming, dark as it seems, the whole thing, the outlook seems to be getting brighter. So, yeah, I, I tend to agree. And it is its presentation. It always has been presentation. It's it relies so much on content. Content's got to be good and it's got to be presented well. So, and I think the industry generally started to understand that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Tony. Tony, any final thoughts from yourself on, yeah. on what the guys have said? Uh, yeah, I completely agree on, uh, you know, with them. Um, just, uh, you know, it, it's exciting to hear, you know, those some of those, uh, comments too because you know internally we're we're getting ready um you know for 2025 so we can 
you know, provide those customers with, with the products they need for, you know, improving their cinemas and um, ensuring quality. So that's, and all, all from my the, point uh, of view, that's good. All, all the companies that all these analysis companies that do some of the stuff they're doing, you know, the way you grab people on the website, the way you do this, the way you do that, <laughs> that's not going to not help if you see what I mean, because they are definitely going about it. They're capturing more audience and they can prove they're capturing more audience. So if that continues, it's going to be good for the industry. Yeah, yeah, that sounds that sounds like a perfect place uh, to end the round table uh, chat with you guys. I'm absolutely loving the optimism and only three months in to 2024 and looking ahead to the rest of this year and to 2025. Guys, thank you so much uh, for your time and I'm sure we'll catch up before all five of you uh, head out to Vegas for CinemaCon. Thanks so much for your time.